What you just did is punishable by death. You will never do it again. Never. People really didn't like Joffrey from Game of Thrones the show, and to a lesser extent the books as well. They really despised him. Ramsay is just as, if not far more villainous, and yet he doesn't get half as much hate as the actor who received death threats. A lot of people oddly idealise Ramsay, same with Tywin or Littlefinger, but Joffrey? No. Everybody hated him, everybody wanted to see him dead, not me. Well struck, dog! Well, sort of me. It was the right time for him to die in the story, but I'd have loved more scenes of Jack Gleason as Joffrey because it's so damn compelling, and I wholeheartedly believe he is the best character in the show. Not the best in the books, but still up there, so I wanted to make a video all about it. Why he's so intensely despised, and also why he's a brilliant character, and hopefully what all of that means. Are you ready? We're gonna have to excuse the fact I have a cold at the moment. Let's just get this train moving. I don't think this section will take too much explanation, um, partly because some of it is obvious. Why do people hate Joffrey so much? Yeah, it's because he does lots of cruel, villainous, horrible things. People dislike him because he does bad stuff. Makes sense. Um, but there's also who he's bad to as well. Generally, audiences can have a bit of a bias because we're subjective creatures who come to love certain characters, such as Ned Stark. I think he was a lot of people's favourites when they were early into the show or the books. A lot of people were rooting for him as the hero, saw him as the main character, and so anyone that executes the main character you've been invested in emotionally, that hurts. Of course, by that logic, people might despise Tywin just as much for causing the Red Wedding, but I think A, the phrase and Roose Bolton get most of the flack for that rather than Tywin, and B, another point we're going to come to in a moment. Ramsay in comparison to Joffrey though, who did he kill? Uh, lots of people, but mostly people we didn't know, and whilst that's still awful, I think it stops a lot of the audience from feeling as personal a hatred. He tortured Theon, of course, which for me is awful. I didn't enjoy that at all and I have a lot of empathy for Theon but I also know from these past videos that people comment things like Theon deserved it, Ramsay was justified to do that, and so on. Some people are willing to give brutality a pass when it favours their personal desires. Theon betrayed the Starks, which again, are characters the audience were emotionally invested in, so they let their hurts at that betrayal boil into a desire for revenge. Some people wanted to see Theon suffer, so they didn't exactly then excuse Ramsay, but they softened towards him, which itself is a really interesting thing to happen how quickly we can say, yes, Ramsay is horrible, but Theon deserved it. Ramsay, of course, also tortured Sansa in the show, or Jane Paul in the books, um, and I think it's opening a hell of a can of worms to drill down into why people excuse that. Mostly, I think that's the minority, though, so we're not going to dwell there. There's also the fact Joffrey is stupid. <laughs> I mean, he's not entirely, no, I think he does have an intelligence, but killing Ned Stark was stupid. The story tells us it's stupid before and after the event, so when Joffrey does does that, it's less an act of villainy that we fear, that feels like a threat, makes him feel like a threat. A lot of fiction's most compelling villains are the ones where you half respect their ability, even if you're appalled by what they do with it. You sense they are highly skilled and it makes them scary. Joffrey you don't respect because he comes across as incompetent, and therefore when he does something villainous that affects what the audience wants, they might be frustrated by it rather than a kind of well-played opponent sort of reaction. I think a big part of what makes Ned Stark's death so much more infuriating than, say, Rob Stark's and Catelyn's is that it didn't need to happen, that it was meaningless, there was no good reason for him to die, it was stupid. You can understand why Rob Stark is killed, because it's an attempt to put down a rebellion, but Ned? It simply shouldn't have happened, and that I think makes it more infuriating and people more keen to blame Joffrey as a result. Combine that with a smug, smarmy sort of voice and body language that Jack Gleason absolutely nails, as well as the impulsiveness, but people hate smug attitudes. If TV has 
taught me anything is that people will 100% prefer someone committing all manner of atrocities to someone who is mostly good but just the tiniest bit smug and superior. Being superior is the worst of sins imaginable. Uh, part of me wonders if that's because it's so relatable, you know, we've all had so many experiences where someone has acted aloof towards us. We can easily tap into the annoyance that made us feel, where hopefully we haven't had the more traumatic, typically villainous experiences. I mean some of us have, but hopefully not most of us. I think it can be easier to switch off from the reality of murder and SA and the awful horror of that, in place of just seeing it like drama in the fictional world. Whereas someone basically being annoying, it's harder to switch off from how that feels because it's ingrained in you so deeply, we've all had so many experiences with that. Thirdly, before we move on, it's that Joffrey isn't given any sympathetic moments. Neither is Ramsay particularly to be fair, so maybe this point doesn't work for him, but Cersei is given sympathetic moments, Tywin kind of is. It's pretty common in fiction for someone set up like a villain to have their backstory revealed in order to make them more understandable, but with Joffrey, that, there are definitely aspects. I could make a video psychoanalyzing him one day, I'd like to do that, but mostly his backstory and his depth and his motivations are in the subtext. There's nothing clear that really lands a punch for the audience and makes them understand him and goes, oh my god, that's why he is the way he is. You can infer it, yeah, but there's not a beat in the story that makes you connect. There deliberately isn't, which I actually quite like as a writing decision. All the same, it means we've got a guy who does horrible, stupid, and annoying things without much sympathetic reasoning. I personally find it odd to despise any character. I'm definitely in a minority there. I'd like I can't remember ever feeling a visceral hatred for a fictional character. But I don't think that means it's necessarily bad when people do. I think we're all guilty of projection and we all need ways to vent our feelings. Sometimes fiction taps into our real experiences, but because it's a fictional character, the anger is mostly harmless. It's mostly a safe place to put it. Mostly um, when you're sending death threats to the actors and you're hating them personally and when you're also letting your frustration get in the way of actually understanding the character and just judging them with a blinkered view, that's not good. Obviously that isn't good, however Joffrey in particular evokes such hatred for so many people. Whilst that's not good, I think those are some of the reasons for it. Enough of the hatred though, I want to talk with passion now about the things I love, starting naturally with with this. With this kiss, I pledge my love to World Anvil. Yep, they sponsored this video, they're still here, hopefully they'll stay here. Uh, World Anvil is an online tool for building worlds, creating characters, designing and managing campaigns for a whole sleuth of games. Sleuth isn't the right word, I don't know why I said that. Look, you can do all that, you can plan and write stories, you can do all sorts of different stuff for creative projects. I use it for the world building of my novel because my old system of massive words documents became far too chaotic. Not only does the ability to create timelines with hyperlinks branching off to specific characters or articles or a billion other things, not only does that make it so much easier to quickly find the information I need, it also makes it so much easier to plan things out and kind of keep going. Sometimes a blank word document for world building is very daunting, so having all sorts of tools to help with visualization, to help you figure out what needs planning next, to keep your brain fizzing and unimpeded because all of the tools are very straightforward and easy to use, that's really important to me. It's like the sharper an artist's pencils, the freer they are to focus on the art. World Anvil is a very sharp pencil. You can create mind maps, you can rearrange elements of your story, do all sorts of campaign related things for that sleuth of games I mentioned. Um, yes, link in the description and as a pinned comment should you desire a 51% discount on all their subscriptions or if you're not yet sure then try out the free version for as long as you like. That's what I did at first and now look where I am, <laughs> shouting their name at you through a screen. World Anvil! 
So first off for why Joffrey is great, I think we have to say sometimes it can be fun to hate a character. Sometimes it isn't an intense real hatred, but a kind of fun delight at getting to hate someone in a half make-believe way. Like when an audience at a pantomime buys into booing at the villain for the fun of it. Joffrey is fun to hate because the character is so effective. A lot of people wanted Joffrey to die and that is partly deliberate. It's very compelling to keep you watching and reading. The Purple Wedding is a huge event in the story that so much builds up to and culminates with a level of catharsis. So we should definitely say that. The point I alluded to a minute ago though, Joffrey is a great character partly because he isn't given any sympathetic moments. Normally I don't think I'd like that. But in this instance, I think it's kind of crucial to his character. At his heart, Joffrey is an impulsive, confused, insecure boy. Everybody sees him as spoiled and bratty, and realistically, a lot of the time you don't get to see people's sympathetic sides. Even Joffrey himself is so busy armouring himself and desperately trying to present some kingly image that he outright refuses to show any vulnerability or actual charm and and ironically, makes himself even less likeable. Like even beheading Ned Stark is a partly performative act of a boy wanting to be adored by the crowd. There is a really interesting sense of desperation that permeates through a lot of his scenes and makes it easy for people like Marjorie to manipulate him, but at no point are we ever directed to pity this or to empathise or even relate to any of Joffrey because, yeah. Nobody does really. The interesting thing about what are typically labelled as bratty children is that they stop being seen for anything other than the brattiness. Even Cersei doesn't really see Joffrey, just sees what she wants him to be. Joffrey is simultaneously the most powerful man and the absolute weakest for how everybody everywhere is constantly playing and manipulating him, disregarding him. Never once is there any genuine connection and that's just so fascinating. Several occasions in the show Joffrey gets slapped or put in his place. The king is tired. See him to his chambers. Or whatever else. And sometimes I think the humour of the show can be a bit cruel, but it is really fun and an interesting paradox there for a seemingly powerful and threatening figure to also be a character where everybody, audience and every character in the entire story, see Joffrey and decide, yep, he needs to be slapped. That's what everybody thinks of the king. In general, that does also mean Joffrey is great for comedy. There are moments where Jack Gleason gets to really ham it up, and it's perfect. He strikes the balance so well, because I think too much could easily make a show ridiculous. Some of the ludicrous, short-sighted, contradictory stuff Joffrey says is really fun. Demanding the crowd to be executed when they throw stuff at him, despite the fact that's definitely not the moment to make demands. Cut Tyrion's book in half, boasting about giving Rob a red smile, it it's fun. Joffrey injects a lot of fun into a show that can sometimes be a little grim and one note in its humour, and I think when Joffrey dies you never quite get that same level of fun again. Increasingly the fun becomes a bit forced and at odds with the world. But also yeah, Joffrey is incompetent, petulant, childish, and all the sorts of things that most abusers kind of are. They can seem tremendously powerful and frightening, but also if you're lucky enough to find the space and safety, you might see that they're also the complete reverse of powerful. It's horribly relatable for Sansa to be stuck in a position where she both fears and looks down on someone like Joffrey. Partly sees him as this pathetic, snivelling child, I think she describes him as at one point, and yet also still really fears him because she knows what he might do with his power. For the character to be both of those things at the same time is a really compelling situation and a perfect expression for why the hierarchy and political system of Westeros is so flawed, because what happens when someone as incompetent and cruel as Joffrey is given absolute power? Not to mention it's just quite a refreshing change. So often villains are scary because they're highly skilled and competent in what they do. Joffrey is scary because he's totally incompetent and never above doing something incredibly stupid and incredibly damaging. The fear comes from the very fact someone like him can be given so much power 
power. And when I look at people like Boris Johnson and things, I find that really relatable. Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire are full of complex, scheming villains, so it's nice to also have ones that are basically just impulsive and short-sighted as well. And he's also a villain with some interesting growth, by the way. You know, Ramsay is just the same throughout the show. So is Sir Gregor, so is Tywin in a lot of ways, but Joffrey starts off as a bit of a cruel, unruly child. You don't take him too seriously initially, and then he gets total power and increasingly spirals into worse and worse behaviour, whilst also being more and more used like a pawn until that pawn is ultimately dispensed with. It's an interesting arc. I'm waffling a little though, the main point is this, Joffrey is a great, really compelling villain because he is the centre point for so much of the story. So many characters are drawn back to him with so many different, varied dynamics. You know, Arya hates him and is driven by a righteous desire for revenge, Cersei dotes on him and fears how she fails to control him. Tyrion can't help belittling him in petty ways, Tywin asserts power over him, Robert neglects him, the little finger manipulates him by fueling his sadistic tendencies, where Marjorie manipulates him by fueling his desire for approval, Ned is made an example by him, Sansa fears and grows beyond him, the Hound passively obeys him, even Sedontus has his own dynamic. Joffrey gets to mean so many things to so many different characters, he gets to have so many different dynamics with so many different characters. I said I said this in my video about what went wrong with Ramsay, he just means the same thing to everyone, which is that he's bad and needs to be defeated. There's more personal feeling when it comes to Joffrey, and more personal different dynamics. Never again does a single villain anchor so many other characters the way Joffrey does. He's also a vehicle for a lot of the themes, and yeah, he is the perfect anchor to keep the story feeling cohesive when there could be a kind of disparate feeling to it. Not to mention when he dies, it has a huge, huge impact on the story for so many reasons. I think a good villain has just as big an impact on the world through their death as they do through their life, and Joffrey is an example of that. He's great to be both mocking him and also on the edge of your seat in suspense and fear at what he might do is such a great clash of emotions. And again, Jack Leeson absolutely nails the performance. I'm so glad he's returned to acting again. These are my thoughts on Joffrey. I feel like I could have gone further, but I also don't want to veer off into incoherent waffling. Let me know what you think. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, maybe support me on Patreon, but otherwise, hopefully see you next time. And as ever, a special thank you goes to Grace, Luke Hoare, Treat You Caber, Michael Gallagher, Flying Spider, Kellyanne Davidson, Samara Salsi, Joshua C. Follier, and Chad Bramwell. Thank you.